Hello, this is Mr. Tybox123, and in this video today, I'm going to be talking about how you go about installing the Xbox Media Center on your Apple TV 2 and why you'd want to do something like that. A lot of people have commented on a video I did on how to jailbreak the Apple TV 2 and said, Why would you want to do it? So, hopefully, we can answer some of those questions in this video today. So, in the background here, you can see that this is my TV with the Apple TV connected to it and it's jailbroken, hence we've now got the green poison menu. So once you've got that, you can do inject software and then choose to inject the Cydia payload. So you can just click on that with the Apple TV remote and it will go away, download the software off of the internet and install that onto your Apple TV too. Now Cydia on the Apple TV jailbreak doesn't offer you the same kind of graphical interface that you would be used to on your iPhone or your iPad or your iPod but it does give you a graphical interface that allows you to install certain elements of applications that are applicable and that do run on your Apple TV so this is nearly finishing up here and once this is done my Apple TV is gonna do a reboot and then we'll be back to the home screen and we can then see what applications are available to us so whilst that's actually rebooting, we can then see that the front row or home screen comes up of the Apple TV and everything looks normal other than the fact we've got the Neato TV option, which is basically the equivalent of Cydia for Apple TV. So one of the things in there is the, the weather manager, which enables you to have a updated weather come down from the internet so you can have a view of what's going on in your area or some other area around the world or the country maybe. Um, there's a whole bunch of options to add RSS feeds in here as you can see and you can add your own or you can use the preset ones that are already in there and read any kind of RSS feed that you want to. So you can add your own RSS location in here quite simply by putting the path and the URL in. We've got a whole bunch of settings to do with actually updating the Neato TV itself, restarting low tide or reboot the Apple TV. You can disable or enable Apple TV updates as well if you want to. So I'm just going to run an Apple, sorry, a Neato TV update here. Uh, it should be the latest version already, but just to double check and show you how it's done, it's just a question of clicking on the button and that will actually go away and update Neato TV. So you can do fairly regular updates on that in case a new version has come out or maybe you've seen a new version come out on some website or something and you want to update to get the latest updates. So once we've got Neato TV installed and just checked for an update, we can now go into the install software option, which gives us a list of the different variations of software or applications that we can put on. I'm going to flick through a couple here that you'll be able to see the description for in the video. So we've got uh, things like Bluetooth stack, we've got VNC server, we've got Ericot utilities, uh, we've got the ability to update all of these utilities or the list of utilities to see any new ones. And most importantly, and the point of this video is the fact that we can actually go away and install the Xbox Media Center Apple TV 2 onto our actual Apple TV. So if I actually click on XBMC ATV2, that will actually go away again, download the software from the internet, from the Debian sources, and install it onto our Apple TV so as we can actually use it. And this is really one of the main reasons for me to actually go away and jailbreak your Apple TV. So if you uh, want to play a range of different formats of movies, for example, like DivX or XVID or maybe even some kind of other format where you've maybe converted your own DVDs or downloaded them, in order to actually play them on an Apple TV normally, you've got to re-encode them and put them into iTunes and then stream them over. With the Xbox Media Center, you can actually play them in their native format. So if you've got XVID files or DivX files or what any kind of format file really, you can literally just leave them on your PC and point the Xbox Media Center to it and that's just going to go away and stream any kind of media file over your Wi-Fi or your local area network and then play them on the TV or the monitor that you've got your Apple TV attached to. So now that that install has happened, it's going to do a respring of the main interface here 
And if we now go to the Neato TV option, sorry, the XBMC option at the top, we can run up XBMC and then you can see that we've got the full Xbox Media Center now running over our Apple TV. And you can see we've got the option of programs, we've got video, um, we've got photos, music, pictures. The difference is between this and the standard Apple TV way of streaming these different kinds of media over the network to your TV is that we don't have to have them stored in iTunes. So instead of having them stored in iTunes, we can literally just have them stored on a share on our Apple or on our PC or whatever the case may be and just stream them over in their native format without actually having to import them into iTunes database or re-encode them so they fit into the, to the iTunes database. So I've just gone into the video sources here and these are some of the ones that are pre-inbuilt into the Xbox Media Center. Different areas online for example where they have collections of, of video that you may want to stream directly over the internet. So you can see there's a whole range of them that are already built into here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and have a look at the details of a couple of these different predefined media sources. So let's have a look at the funny or die one. So it gives you a description of it here and you can also install it if you want to. So that's now installed and enabled and you can see it working away in the, in the bottom corner there. We've also got a few other options. Let's do Fox News. That's now installed and enabled. And then once we've done that, we can actually go to those sources that we've added, click on one of them, and then we can actually directly stream the different latest videos that they've got from their website over the internet. So let's just pick out one of these videos here and see what they look like. So there you go, you can see that's now streaming directly over the internet from the Fox News website. Let's go back and choose one of the ones from Funny or Die and give that a go and see what that looks like. Let's pick exclusives and then we'll just pick the top one here. Just click OK and that will play. And there we go. You can see that some of them obviously aren't amazing quality. They're, some of them are in HD, some of them aren't, but that's really down to the source rather than this particular application. If we go back into videos and we go to add source, you can simply go in here and start browsing all of your different locations around your network, whether it be UPnP or a Windows SMB share or whatever the case may be. And then you can browse to your machine, pick out a share that's actually on that machine. So you can see the list of my machines here. We've got my Mac Pro there. We can browse that and it's gonna pull up the Windows shares on my Mac Pro. And then we can go ahead and pick one of those locations where we've got all of our media files stored, add it, and then we can browse directly to that and start playing our media directly over the Wi-Fi or Ethernet. So there's also some actual programs that are built directly into the Xbox Media Center itself, which we can also use. So you can see in the list here, we've got a whole bunch. So Gmail Checker, Audio Mixer, and a whole range of applications there that again, we can simply click on download and they'll be instantly available to us inside the Xbox Media Center. We can completely modify the appearance and all of the settings around the whole of the Xbox Media Center as well. So anyway, to summarize, for me, this is a reason in itself to install a, a jailbreak on your Apple TV too. The, the pure ability to be able to use the Xbox Media Center and have a much more flexible way of accessing all your different kinds of media rather than directly relying upon iTunes is well worth going ahead and jailbreaking your Apple TV and just easily giving yourself access to all of these different kinds of media. So anyway, I hope that some of you have found this video useful. There's a video on my channel that shows you how to jailbreak your Apple TV using the latest Green Poison jailbreak, untethered jailbreak. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.